Today I will tell you how exercising is going to affect your polyphasic schedule choice. I have reviewed a ton of EEG graphs uh, to actually see how people's exercising habits are going to change their sleep needs and how to share this information along with results from the 2018 polyphasic survey about how exercising affects you with you. I will also explain how exercising affects your sleep need in general and detail which exercising methods you will need to watch out for during your adaptations. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower. I'm a main author of polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. I'm also the server owner of the polyphasic discord and I'm moderator on the r slash polyphasic subreddit. Today's topic is going to be about exercising and polyphasic sleep and if you're enjoying this content be sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't done it already so you don't miss out on any polyphasic sleep related content in the future in order to ensure you have high chances to successfully adapt to polyphasic schedules in the future. Back to the topic, how does polyphasic sleep and exercising work together? Okay, so in general, activities that only involve a moderate to light amount of exercising like uh, light cardio or light sports, uh, they shouldn't have a significant effect on your sleep architecture, except when attempting extreme polyphasic schedules. However, activities that uh, are very physically strenuous uh, or involve high intensity exercise like heavy sports, heavy weight lifting, um, high intensity interval training, uh, they should be taken with more consideration. When engaging with these activities, additional sleep time is required for muscle repair and tissue repair, um, and it's going to be reflected as an increase in SWS requirements. Uh, the increase in SWS causes a reduction in the NREM2 light sleep stage as well, uh, but you're most likely going to need to give away with more sleep and consequently the total amount of daily sleep production that is possible for people who engage in this sort of activities is reduced when with polyphasic sleep because they require more sleep overall. No Bob, I'm telling you, you're lifting weights 5 times a week and you sleep 10 hours on mono, you can't adapt to Uberman, stop trying it! So it's been reported that people engaging in high levels of exercising are able to do a polyphasic schedule with at least 3 cycles in the SWS heavy core without any problems. Though additional naps may be needed to be added during the day to allow for REM to take up place in those instead of taking place in the SWS core. During the adaptation it's best not to raise the SWS need unnecessarily as it could lead to an elevated risk of getting a so SWS nap. Typically you can continue the level of physical exertion that you were used to after you have fully adapted to your schedule. While the significant muscle and tissue repairs generally increases sleep duration, uh, exercising and an active lifestyle can reduce the feeling of constant tiredness that many inactive people experience. Many people also find physical activities helpful during the adaptation when it can be used to combat the urge to fall asleep, uh, especially during the second and third adaptation stages where oversleeps are mostly present. After adapting, sporadically increasing the course length by one cycle in order to support more exercising is possible, uh, but it shouldn't be done too often. Uh, some decompression or adaptation setbacks are to be expected as a result, which can take a few days to heal. Doing this once a week uh, at most will greatly help you with the stability of your schedule and to avoid significant fluctuations in energy and will also help minimize the chance of oversleeping. Many people's sleep quality is also impacted by exercising too close to sleeping and thus it's best to leave a gap of at least two hours between exercising and sleeping unless you know that shorter gap doesn't hinder your ability to fall asleep. See we're all individuals and unfortunately everybody's body is different and while most people might feel more alert from exercising, other people can become more tired from it. Uh, if you are able to fall asleep fast and dream in your naps, especially during the later parts of the adaptation, then this may not apply to you or potentially not to the full extent. Still, the safe option is to leave two hours between exercising and sleeping. Well, of course you can't fall asleep, Bob. You've been lifting weights until 15 minutes ago. What do you mean you want your money back? You're not paying me. 
Due to the significant SWS deprivation during adaptations to schedules with extreme levels of sleep reduction, especially nap only schedules with severe SWS rebounds during the adaptation, care should be taken not to engage in overexertion. It may take extra time to recover, recover from light to moderate levels of exercising, especially with a physically active job. Um, after the adaptation period, however, this should be less noticeable, but will likely preserve even on extreme schedules. Is there anything else that should be considered with exercising? Actually, yes. Exercising can mildly contribute to establishing the circadian rhythm by setting a new circadian morning. What this means is that exercising should be avoided during the dark period, although the effect on the circadian rhythm is minor compared to light exposure. Uh, night shift workers may opt to use exercise as a way to favorably shift their circadian rhythm to better accommodate for their new sleep and work schedule. Uh, more information on the dark period can be expected in a future video, so stay tuned for that. Let's look at some statistics for the 2018 Polyphasic Survey. In this survey there were 78 entries. The average exercising duration for, per week for these people was 4.37 hours, uh, with an intensity of 2.15, so a medium level of intensity. Now, when people became polyphasic, 33% of them started exercising more, 19% started exercising less, and 52% of them did not change their exercising habits. What this means is that uh, switching to a polyphasic schedule most likely either increases the amount that people exercise or doesn't change it at all. The common reason stated for why they increased their exercising habits uh, was because polyphasic sleep allowed them to have more time to exercise and the reason for less exercise was mostly a lack of energy. So yeah, it seems like polyphasic sleep is commonly used by people in order to exercise more. However, during adaptation you should hold off on the intensity a bit. Try to go for cardio-oriented exercises instead of muscle building ones, just to make sure that you don't increase your SWS need unnecessarily. That's all for today. Please share in the comments below if you've noticed a change in your exercising habits from when becoming polyphasic. Maybe you've started exercising more, maybe you haven't exercised as much, whatever it is, share it. Uh, and if you haven't started sleeping polyphasically yet, have you changed your exercising habits in order to prepare for, ad for your adaptation? Have you started exercising more in order to improve your immune system? Tell us in the comments! Anyways, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Pleasant naps, people! Hey, I'm Akahana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via our secure Ko-fi pages. This helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.